All right. Welcome, everybody. Happy, happy Wednesday. Welcome to the Closing Beat. Uh, interesting day in the markets today. We will cover all of that. This is where we do that. We're financial advisors. Jazzwealth.com is where you can find us. We manage our own portfolios for you, so we don't invest in mutual funds and things. If you have a Roth IRA, traditional IRA, old 401k that you're trying to roll over, or you're just thinking about getting started investing, well, keep us in mind at Jazz Wealth, of course. Uh, a couple things I need to point out real quick. Um, our class last night for our clients, understanding the speed and volatility of portfolios, how that all works, what it even means. Uh, that link that you have in your email, just click on that. You should be able to check that out. Very good class, and it's only getting better from here. In two weeks, we're going to be doing the Rent Your IRA class, where we go over the specifics of how it all works, how we build it for you. So when you get to retirement, when you start to build up that nest egg, you'll know what to expect from us when we start making that transition. So that is that. Um, on this, uh, for the stock market today, you had a fairly negative day, but ultimately it finished pretty positive. There's a couple things I take issue with uh, in the headlines today, but we'll go over it. Um, so if you look at the screen there, you got the Dow lower by 137. Uh, S&P lost uh, 21. The NASDAQ was the worst performer, second worst performer. Really, the Russell 2000 was the worst, but the NASDAQ lost 96 points. A lot of tech stuff. So let's go over to the charts because we talk a lot about this here. Um, here's the Dow. You, you get the picture on the Dow. It had a rough day, but basically recovered. Now, big picture, what do you have? You have a very slow uptrending market so far for most of the year, right? If we go back in time, you look back towards the end of last year, look at how ridiculous that rally was from September through the end of the year. That was ridiculous. So it's very normal for a market to take some time and sort of chop around. We just get lucky here because this one happens to be slowly trending higher. So if I look a little bit closer, you're kind of okay with this. And I mention this every day for like the last seven days. If the markets want to pull back, and they are now, as long as it's not this over here, where they fall so rapidly that the whole world takes a look and goes, what's going on there in the US, then you're okay with it. This is a slow breathing out. So the market's been breathing in and breathing out. You guys tired of me saying that yet? Breathing in, breathing out, big breath in, and now we're taking a breath out, just relaxing a little bit. Add to that, for the next two weeks in the stock market, there is zero to talk about as far as anything, really. So whatever news comes up is going to seem more exaggerated than it really is. I've done this now. This will be my, I don't know, how old am I? <laughs> this will be like my 19th year going through this. And so right now, until Labor Day, there's nothing to talk about. Watch the news and watch how they try to make a big deal out of everything because they need your attention. If you're advertising on TV, watch how the commercials on CNBC and Bloomberg all of a sudden change. There's different commercials there because those guys are getting a discount. It's going to be a lot more of your local companies and not so much the national. I know because we advertise here locally and we get a hell of a deal for the next two weeks. Just saying on those uh, financial channels. Okay, uh, so that's the Dow. Let's take a little bit deeper look. We always say you need the tech stocks uh, and the banking stocks. So let's start with the bank stocks because you didn't hear a lot about them today, did you? You got uh, the banking stocks here. I'm using the XLF. Use whatever you like to look at the banking stocks. Um, small day, just a little tiny down day. Normally wouldn't be a big deal. You go, okay, maybe the markets can do something special here. Let's look at tech stocks. Nope. You weren't going to get a rally today because these tech stocks were hit so hard. They were hit hard and they just couldn't come off the lows. If you followed minute by minute, uh, I, I won't pull it up, but if you follow like a five minute time period, they just couldn't get anything going. So you got that feeling early. We were talking about it today early, just like, ah, oh, it's gonna be one of those days, just a down day. You, you don't need to check every second. Now, because the media needed something to focus on, they were like, oh my God, Turkey. Like, no offense, but who cares about Turkey? Like when it comes to our stock market, who cares? It, it, it very little impact there. So the, the media was like, oh my God, Turkey. Everybody was pretty much over that. We figured that out yesterday. What did they focus on today? Is China slowing down? Oh my God, is there a problem in China? Let me lay this out for you real quick. Here's the short story. There's a company called Tencent. No doubt they're a big, big player over there in China. No problem. Tencent came out with earnings that were showing slower growth. And so everybody went, oh my God, China's slowing down. If, some of the, if Amazon showed slowing growth, we would all be talking about, hey, the US may be slowing down, right? I mean, it makes sense. So over there, the company's called Tencent. They said earnings weren't as good as we expected. Revenue was slowing down. And so everybody thought, here we go, China's slowing down. 
a little hint, China's already slowing down. We didn't need them to tell us that. But I digress. So here's what happened. Tencent reports their earnings. The media goes right for China is slowing down. Okay? Here's what really happened. In China, the government banned the sale of a game. I wrote the game down uh, so I would know because it, it translated to English. They, uh, they, they banned the game Monster Hunter World. Okay. What they also did was they banned new licenses. They banned new sales of streaming or games over there. This isn't new news. This happened in January. So what's happened is Tencent out there sort of restricted, not able to sell the games that they were hoping for. Of course their revenues look a little bit lower. They're the big behemoth in the room. They report earnings now in July, or I'm sorry, August, and everybody goes, oh my God, is China slowing down? No, they had one hand behind their back for the last, for the half of the year. And so that's why it seems like they're slowing down. I would agree that China's got some issues we're gonna start talking about, but for the moment, that's all that is. It's just, that, I hope I put that into perspective there for you. So I wouldn't really um, worry too much about that. Uh, here is China, by the way, uh, one of the ETFs, the large cap ETF. It broke to new lows if you're following along stuff uh, like that. Now, let's go back to the states here because China, of course, they have their own problems. We won't like pick on them now or whatever, but here's what we got going on in the states. Oil. Remember yesterday we mentioned, hey, you got the oil inventory numbers coming out today, probably going to show an increase in the stockpile, the number of barrels of oil sitting around in Oklahoma. We get a report every week. Well, I did not even think the report would be this bad. We were expecting a reduction of 2.6 million barrels. All these barrels, we were expecting to be consuming them and using them, and instead we got an increase of 6.8 million barrels. More barrels of oil available to be converted to gas and all that great stuff means the price of oil probably doesn't deserve to be so high. So if we look at the price of oil, it just sold off 3% today. Horrible day for the price of oil. And so anything energy related uh, also took a, a, a nosedive, <laughs> however you want to say it, a sharp move lower, a swan dive, a jump out of a plane with no parachute. That is basically what happened today. So when we go look at the S&P 500, you've got mostly energy names, uh, oil drillers, oil companies. What one would you guys know? You, you know some of these. Freeport McNamaran, uh, Marathon Oil, you guys know them. Um, ConocoPhillips, you guys know them. You basically get that group of list in the biggest losers of the day. So that's the price of oil. No problem. Uh, if we go to the other sort of weak spot in the market, it is earnings season. For the most part, it's over, except for retail stocks. So we got that going on. Here is a look at the retail space today. This candlestick here represents today, down almost 3% on the day. So you had Macy's, Actually, I mean, Macy's did okay, right? So Macy's reported earnings, revenue, uh, that all beat expectations, not bad. Sales growth, a little bit weak on sales growth. And that's a big deal for a company that has such a large physical footprint. Uh, so down 16% today, that really hurt retail stocks. Macy's was your worst performer in the S&P 500. And then it took along some of the other names that also have larger physical footprints. You had Kohl's, Nordstrom, The Gap Down, Ralph Lauren, Tiffany's, and you know, we'll go, let's see if there's any more. Oh yeah, well, Under Armour, but you know, not so bad there. Basically, those were the names it took with it. Any stores that have a big store and rely on people coming to the store to do business there, all pretty much were clobbered today if you're paying attention on uh, that sort of thing. You know, let's take a look at Berkshire Hathaway. I don't know what it did today. Uh, did I type it in wrong? BR, okay, there we go. So Berkshire Hathaway today, uh, actually down a little bit. Warren Buffett, look, the big investors, you know how I tease the bigger investors, they say, well, if they're so rich, why don't they buy index funds? Well, the reason we know they don't is because you, they have a form, it's a 13F. Is it the 13F that has, uh, that's for uh, their reports, uh, reporting, I don't know, 13Q maybe, I forget, um, whatever. So anyways, um, we got that report, right? And so it comes out quarterly. We got to see that they, uh, Berkshire Hathaway raised their stake in Apple, Southwest, Goldman Sachs. There's a whole breakdown of how they did it. And so sometimes the stock has a nice little rally on that news. If you take a look at Apple, that one basically just stuck right at the highs, right? Stuck right at the highs. They're like, we got old, Warren Buffett with us, we can't go wrong. Uh, and so that stock basically sat at the highs. I didn't look at Southwest. 
Southwest up 2% today. That's probably largely because of, uh, well, the price of oil declining. That's helpful. But Mr. Warren Buffett as well. So uh, that's what we have there. That's basically it. Um, let's try to make something positive out of it. Um, if I go over here, <laughs> you know I love Chipotle. That was your best performer in the S&P 500 today, adding 6.6%. They're coming back. I'm telling you, old Chipotle, they're going to make it happen. I still eat there. I haven't gotten sick. I don't eat the chicken. I would never eat the chicken there. <laughs> but uh, I eat there. They're doing good. Uh, so that was your best performer. You had, um, if we go through the list here, some of the um, REITs, obviously with uh, interest rates helping out a little bit there. Uh, Southwest Airlines we mentioned in there. Uh, Hershey, the Hershey company doing well today up almost 2%. A lot of uh, gainers on the day in the S&P 500 in those spaces, but tiny, just like 1%, a little bit, maybe a little bit better than that. A lot of the defensive names, by the way, if you're really geeking out on this stuff today, uh, that's what we have there. What else do we have for you? Uh, worst performing sector today, energy. We already covered that. Uh, so that was down 3.5%. Uh, you can see it on the screen there, just a nosedive. Bad day for energy. Real estate, best performer. You're going to have utilities in there somewhere. Yep, second best performer. Uh, telecom did okay today. Yeah, you basically, you get the gist of it, right? So you had energy. You're going to have emerging markets still with issues there. You can look at Turkey. Uh, you know, let's do that real quick. Uh, Turkey itself had a decent day. They did what we did back in the day when we had our banking crisis. They basically stopped or, or limiting some of the currency swaps by the banks which should basically slow the ability for people to short the lira, the Turkish currency. So by them sort of doing that, we did that back in the day as well. It's sort of a known move. Um, and because of that, here's the price. Here's Turkey, right? Here's their ETF, uh, basically just trying to recover a little bit. It added 4% on the day. So that just kind of proof that Turkey's really not the focus, right? It was the if there were anything else to talk about today, we would never have even mentioned, is China slowing down? Oh my God, what happened to Tencent? It would have been a quick story and we move on. I don't know, that's my opinion. We'll, we'll see what happened. Yeah, tech stocks got hammered today. Facebook was hit too. You know what's funny? I looked at all of those names earlier, didn't even consider Facebook. Facebook wasn't down that much. It was down earlier on the day, like everything else, yeah. The Dow was down about 350 and uh, recovered to basically nothing. With the earnings after hours, by the way, the Dow's only down 90 points. So uh, not too bad there. The NASDAQ also eh, coming back a little bit as well. I think Cisco reported earnings. Uh, Nico, hey, let's take a look. You think you have Netflix? Now I know that broke through the, there we go. Look, I'll tell you what, let's do this. If you got a minute, Here's what we got. Here's Netflix on the chart. We made a big deal out of it holding this trend line. And once it broke, you now know this thing is in a downtrend. Okay. So with, with me leaving my personal opinion out of it, technical traders look at this and go, when it breaks, that trade is over. So everybody that was long in here that was using this support line, look at, they decided on this day and probably over the next day or two to get out. So because of that, there's no rush to go back to this stock. It's going to have some positive days. It's going to have some negative days. In my opinion, there's no rush. If this fell rapidly to that 200-day moving average, 292, in a very aggressive way, I would like that, right? And I'll show you what aggressive means. Newmont, see how this thing here sold off, sold off, sold off, and now it's off a waterfall cliff? That's going to start to bounce from here. It's not my opinion. Well, I mean, I guess it's an opinion. But that's going to start to bounce from here because of how extended it is. It will attract attention. You already see traders talking about it, looking to try to pick the bottom there. So Netflix, I'm in no hurry. I don't think anybody's in any hurry. The average analyst uh, consensus is a little bit lower, but still higher than the current price. So that doesn't help you in any way. Uh, so no hurry, basically, is the, the short, uh, short answer there. Uh, if you didn't have any stocks in the green today, you need to read about your po portfolio. Uh, well, that would give you a hint, wouldn't it? That would let you know that you were pretty much all tech and all oil or all China, I guess. Uh, so hopefully that's not the case. Uh, Daniel Moody sold all his stocks today. You're going all cash. Nice. Let's see what happens. That scared you out of it? That was enough? I don't know. There wasn't really, uh, not really anything that scared me at the moment, but we'll see. I mean, nothing wrong with having cash on the sidelines. Uh, no selling on a red day. You added to a few positions. 
you're one of the contrarians, huh? We did a class, by the way, The Doe Show, at 1 o'clock where we talk about uh, millionaires. I've interviewed 16 millionaires, just gave some advice. I could probably have gone on for hours about that, but one of the ladies is actually a contrarian. It's not her. It's not Nicole, by the way, um, and, but loves when the markets fall so she can buy. Doesn't care where the markets fall to. She's a grumpy person when the markets are higher. It's pretty cool. Well, I mean, you know, cool to watch. <laughs> not cool to be around. Anyways, okay, uh, gonna wrap it up there. Thank you guys so much for watching and the nice comments there uh, or compliments. We will be back uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's uh, Doe Show, we're gonna do what's your number for retirement, for buying a house, for buying a car, saving for college, uh, saving or investing just for fun, right? What's your number? How do you figure out the number? How do you go about it? We're gonna do it tomorrow on the Doe Show at live at one o'clock. Uh, have a great day, we'll talk to you later. Why should you choose JazzWealth as your retirement or long-term investing service? Our portfolios are managed by us, not some faceless mutual fund manager. Our private classes will teach you everything about investing and getting your dough straight. Best of all, our fiduciary standard means your best interest comes before ours.